What you call warbird restoration started in the 1960s, maybe the late 1950s, where individuals were buying surplus aircraft for the engines and the propellers and the other parts and components to build crop dusters or some other airplanes. And they found that they could actually buy an airplane for about the same price, and they started this movement where they would restore the airplanes back to flying condition. So at that time, the parts were plentiful. You could buy spare parts, you could buy two or three airplanes and make one airplane out of three. And that's not the case anymore. The spare parts don't exist. So we're using modern technology to recreate, remanufacture parts, either from original drawings or by salvaging parts that were formerly thought to not be salvageable, such as the technology with joining technologies. When the engines were designed and built originally, they had overhauls in mind. So parts could be inspected on an overhaul, and for instance, they could be ground down and refinished. And you might put in an oversized bearing, that type of thing. There's only so many times you can do that before you reach the limits, the overhaul limits. And so we're at that point now where a lot of these parts for these engines that are still flying 60 and 70 years after they were designed, that even the spare parts are becoming worn out. So we began talking with Michael about trying to find ways to salvage these parts. Could we use your advanced technology to go beyond what would be considered worn out? For instance, the cylinder heads right here, these are forged aluminum cylinder heads. If they develop cracks or if they wear down, there, there's nothing you can do about it right now. Well, this is a forging, which is then later machined. And that's how we started speaking with you about trying to save these cylinder heads for the R2800. Same thing with the crankshaft. And that's the technology that we're trying to bring to bear to keep the Corsairs flying, keep the other World War II aircraft and engines flying. Right, so we're going to employ laser technology. We're going to provide metallic powders, which will be distributed into the laser beam. And through CAD models, we can go back and restore worn areas and help restore the, the, the components to the original. And that's fantastic, that just, you know, just being able to bring all those different disciplines together because our using SolidWorks has enabled us to create the files and also with BoltWorks doing the reverse engineering and the scanning, we can give you the data of what the part's supposed to look like and the damaged part and then we'll test it in our engines. Right, it's an amazing time uh, to be, uh, be part of this restoration because it hasn't been until recent times that uh, we have the, the power of computer-aided design and laser technology to come together to be able to actually model parts and go back and restore components to their uh, original shape. It really is exciting and I tell a lot of people when they say this is interesting you're helping save a 70 year old aircraft but what's the practical application? Right. Well we've got B-52s that were built, the newest one was built in 1961 well, and as for the parts and everything else this can be applied to anything. And we're proud to be part of the team. Uh, we're a small company, uh, we're entrepreneurs, uh, we're part of the whole Connecticut um, you know, history in terms of uh, you know, being part of technology that's, that's evolved here from Connecticut, uh, in, including laser, which is, this is the center of excellence for laser technology. And um, being an entrepreneur and a first generation business owner, I'm happy and, uh, to be able to help my friend Craig here in uh, helping restore this wonderful aircraft, the Corsair. So Craig, tell me, uh, do we have one of these things running? Uh, I'd love to see one of these things in action. Well, as a matter of fact, we have the largest piston engine to fly, production engine to fly in an aircraft, the Pratt Whitney R4360 Wasp Major. It's right outside on our test cell, and it's all prepared for a test run. We can go fire it up. Let's go see it. Let's go do it. All right. When you see Michael here, come over here on the left side. What I'm going to have you do is I'm going to be on the right side. And just briefly, this is our battery system. This brings our battery on. We're going to have the fuel off right now because we're not trying to start it. This right here is a live starter. If you hit that now, that starter is going to start turning mm -hmm. the engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the throttle wide open now, and I have the fuel off, and I have the fuel off here. And then I'm going to put this pre oil pump on so we get oil going through the engine, and after about 5 or 10 seconds, I'm going to ask you to engage the starter. You hold the starter switch in. And then you'll be able to see, just pick a spot. When you see, like over here, mm -hmm. when the blade comes by here, that'll be one. And then you just count out loud. And what we're looking for with the blades is we want to make sure that they're going nice and smooth. If they hesitate, we've got oil in the, cis in the cylinders. Okay. It's got a clutch on it, on the starter. So if there is oil, it'll just stop turning. Then we'll have to investigate and take the spark plug out. But we've already done it today, so we should be okay. And then sometimes I'm making things up, I'm changing the procedure because every start is usually a little bit different, especially when it's this cold. <coughs> right. Okay? <coughs> so we get the fuel valve on. Off the table. 
Yeah, that will. You might want to keep that in your pocket. Okay? And then uh, I'll shout out what I'm doing, what I'm looking at, why I'm doing it. And so we should be good to go. Okay? And you Batteries can go on. ahead. Batteries on. And Starter, clear free. Correct. Right? Yep. And your starter, go ahead and start. Two, one. Thank you. 